All right, so we are again continuing the fourth module at the end of that. Um, so we want to have examples of applied, okay, so we, um, Pramod talk, uh, talked about social, uh, sorry, uh, sensor data, I'll talk about social data. Um, around 2005, uh, social media picked up big time and um, as you know recently um, on Facebook there were billion uh, people using it in a day. Uh, but you know that that kind of data continues to uh, grow um, and uh, quickly the um, sensor data is uh, overtaking that, the, has overtaken that in fact the uh, you know IoT data. Um, but interestingly uh, very often humans are involved um, um, along with sensor data. So uh, you take any say mobile phone, they have the sensors but they also have applications like uh, Twitter or Facebook or uh, variety Snapchat. Again they are used for creating social data and um, I introduce a term called citizen sensing. So it's a human in the loop sensing. So that's another very um, uh, important uh, type of uh, uh, data that is generated. Uh, in fact it is more interesting because humans are able to observe, so they, we have our senses and then we are able to intellectually transform them into uh, text based observations uh, that are, that capture a lot of things like our own sentiment or emotion and um, uh, our own feeling and our own expectations and things of that nature. So humans add lot more value to what is out there as a just physical uh, phenomena out there, right? Um, so there are many um, forms of metadata. Now um, Twitter, taking Twitter as an example or tweet, you know, of, of social data. Uh, let's look at some of the interesting complexity. So uh, here is a tweet, uh, but um, part of, a lot more than the tweet itself. Tweet can be, uh, you know, currently at least limit, they are limited to 140 characters. But the entire message can be uh, 2K. So all the rest can be filled out by a whole bunch of annotations. Just as one example, uh, there is information about uh, the person who has posted the tweet. There is information of course about the time when it is posted, that information about the device from which it is posted. Um, if the location uh, you know, um, is allowed to be reported, then uh, there will be GPS coordinated already captured in along with the tweet and I can get access that through um, you know, when I access the tweet, that metadata is there in the envelope. So all that data is uh, available, metadata, all of them is, uh, all the data is automatically generated and made available to us. Here um, you can see a whole variety of names, I won't go into just too much, but for example, author's screen name, author's username, uh, Excuse me, creation date of this account, so many other things can be picked up as uh, you know uh, to help us um, make better use of that data. There's some more, more of that going on, um, right? But you get an idea, there's so much bounding box of this place. So uh, there is um, a variety of metadata. Uh, here is a simple uh, way to think about um, there are a bunch of explicit information uh, that you can get. Um, so one type of metadata you can get is called pe people metadata, right? So I mean, it's most about it's about poster. It, it tells you a lot. For example, if I know the poster is journalist, suppose the uh, poster is a doctor or a medical researcher, then I can give higher credence to uh, you know uh, the tweet from that on that topic, on the topic that we expect that person to be expert uh, on, uh, have expertise on. So. Um, there are all this information uh, about uh, you know the person's own photograph may be there, right? Um, uh, and and uh, you know if you're on LinkedIn, you can get it group membership and many other things. Then there will be implicit information, right? Uh, that is not um, that is from the user attention metadata, so page views, uh, Facebook likes. Um, these are you know collected over a period of time. You have to turn on the um, uh, light for the flash. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, there is, you know, uh, the, the, the engagement the person has, right? Tweets, retweets, and things of that nature. So for example, if you look at a um, uh, profile page, you can see on this there is an identification uh, of the person that is involved. Uh, here it also specifies where is that person from. Um, you can um, uh, pick, uh, you know, there is a home page for that person. There is um, information on his interests. So he's interested in social network analysis and content and network dynamics. There's all this other information, timeline is activity on timeline, uh, you know, the favorites, other things that he has done, right? So you can pick up a whole bunch of information of that kind. Um, user identification meta, interest meta, um, uh, and you can see a whole you know, list of those there. Activity metadata, like how old is the profile, how frequently the person posts, uh, the time set, uh, you know, last time he posted was active and so on and so forth, right? Influence data, for example, how many times his tweets are uh, favorited or um, uh, how many people follow him, many other things of the nature. So you can see a whole, uh, you know, long list of uh, things that um, you can find out. Uh, there is a, um, so, so in organized thinking of all the metadata is, can be very valuable in developing a more meaningful applications. Um, this is something that has still not been mastered well. You know, the whole concept of metadata generally is not taught, you know, you may, you know many, many people get uh, their masters in computer science and they have not, you know, had a single class or activity that uh, allow, you know, that, that, that take them through the concept of metadata. Uh, we learned a lot about database and data manipulation, but data about data is equally important. Um, so you have content independent metadata, uh, date, or uh, location, author, oops, I clicked wrong one, content dependent metadata. Uh, so where you have direct content based metadata and indirect content based meta metadata, right? So and I've, you know, you can see the examples there. I don't want to go through all of this exhaustively. What I think we want to do is to get an appreciation that there's all this possible type of metadata out there. And they have important implications. Uh, in addition to the data, to understand the context of the data, it's very important who, who for example, posted the data. Where was it posted from? Uh, as much as it is important that um, uh, what emotion does it express or what does it talk about? So. Uh, uh, so, you, you know, now once that with broader framework of content independent, content dependent metadata, you look at now every different types of content. So for tweets, for example, I would, I, I listed some of the content metadata there, content independent metadata, right? Um, then I have listed some of the content depend, uh, uh, you know, for SMS, they're different, right? Here are, um, you know, uh, content dependent metadata for tweet. And there are on the left explicit content uh, metadata and implicit content metadata. So you can see comprehensive form of information. And for each of them, you can figure out um, the applications, right? Uh, entities mentioned in the tweet versus uh, sentiment uh, mentioned what does a person think about a topic, right? What is the intention? Does that person, does that tweet says the person is commenting on it or it indicates the person has intention of buy, buying it? For example, if the uh, person um, uh, already bought a um, uh, phone and ask uh, how do I use a feature? Well, now you know the person is already bought the phone, then only is likely to say, how do I use the feature? But do we, does the thing has that feature? Does the phone have the feature? Well, possibly it says person has not bought it, but is interested in it. So there is a potential intent to purchase it if the answers you know, met his expectation, her expectations, right? So understanding many of these things can um, help you with your unique application needs. For example, if for advertisement, uh, you know, you don't want to, um, uh, you, can, you know, intention to purchase could be very important for advertiser uh, who wants to sell that product. But then, uh, if the person already has the product, then maybe it is the app, um, you know, uh, uh, somebody who is selling the app, 
who wants to advertise when you already know that person already has that device, right? And the kind of uh, the, a, a person is asking for an application, well, you give him a link of exactly where you can purchase the application. So these metadata things give you um, a lot of things. Here I have listed some more. Again, you can sense large amount of this thing available. And, and, it, and it has, uh, there is this structure metadata, relationship metadata. Again, going through all of these things uh, will go through a, lo a lot of time, but I just want to give you an idea. All right. Is that, is that all we have? Okay. Well, that's all we have. I wanted to possibly capture some examples from our um, uh, tutorial. We didn't get that, right? Okay. All right. So, yeah, we'll we'll go through a lot deeper right now. This was just to give you. Okay. You don't have to. Okay. So for now, it is just uh, to give you a very high level view of that. Maybe Amit, can can I show the things that we do on Twitter? Oh yes, please, relevant? please, please do. I, I'm going to show a lot more on what we do on Twitter, but we have a few minutes. Why don't you show? Okay. No. 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 I, I, you go ahead. No, mm -hmm. I, if we have just a few minutes, so we do it. Yeah, so go ahead. You have a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, this morning I was saying that we have a company, right? <laughs> and uh, what we do is exactly what Amit was doing here. So, for instance, uh, where's Lash? Here. Let's hope I remember the link. No, I forgot the link. But maybe now I remember. Doing exactly what Amit was uh, uh, saying. So what, what we do, we take Instagram and Twitter in real time from the area of Milano. And uh, we plot visualizations in real time uh, that uh, exploit some of the metadata that are either implicitly or explicitly present here. So for instance, this is Milano now. And uh, you can go to Expo area. And uh, you can zoom in these clouds and see what's going on. This is the famous tree of life. I don't know if you know it. And if you zoom in up, definitely there will be an Instagram that shows it. Right? OK. It's night there. And uh, um, then uh, these are an example of uh, implicit metadata. Uh, view, zoom, what, what is full screen? Uh, click on the green button. On click the on the green button, yes, that's a good idea. That's oh, no, it's already Just click okay, on don't green. worry. So these are the pavilions. The, the dots here are number of mentions uh, on tweet or Instagram. So what's going on is uh, we take uh, all the positions and we take uh, all the text. We do uh, entity extraction. And if they name uh, the Twitter or the Instagram handler of a pavilion, if they name uh, the nation and the world pavilion, if they name special events that we know are going on uh, in the pavilion, then we create the dot, right? So in this evening, the most. Uh, right. Ah, okay. So, in this moment, uh, the the most tweeted pavilion is uh, the Italian one. Eh? But uh, if you change the moment, you you see different things. And um, this is simply the amount of uh, tweets in Instagram over time. So you see that uh, it, it's not a small number. Okay, so you have uh, this going on there. 
Then we have uh, simit. Oh, I lost my pointer. I lost my pointer. Where is it? Is in this direction? Yes. So uh, this is a uh, geolocated tweet of Milano versus Expo. And these are the top hashtag on Twitter and Instagram. And you have entities. Yeah? So uh, we, we run entity recognition and then we can produce this list of entities. So yesterday, for instance, in another deployment that we have for, uh, for Como, So you see the hashtag where Lake Como, Italy, Lago di Como, Como, blah, 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 okay? And if you check the entities, you see architecture and uh, this uh, famous uh, architect, okay? The reason is that uh, they just uh, uh, inaugurare? presented, presented to a show of uh, a, a new sculptor from this architect. So it's not, uh, there is no special, I mean, hashtag used, there is no, um, I mean, <laughs> minor thing that you can actually grab from syntax, but in semantics it's there. So people are actually saying the sculptor of uh, uh, Daniel Lepskin in Como is very nice, right? And so you can actually grasp the name and detect it as an entity. So it's not written meaning uh, in the metadata, but you can apply semantic technology, get it out, and then you can discover it. Yeah? Um, we run it through a, a, an entity recognition system. We have our own brew ones, but in this special case, we buy the service from a company in Italy because it's much cheaper to run it. Basically, the, the idea of uh, having it on the cloud that scales, if we have to elastically scale it out, uh, it's much easier than running it ourselves. The dots in the expo, that one is our own component because the problem is that this is not configurable. So when you want to grasp knowledge, that is not common sense. DBpedia likes kind of knowledge. You cannot use these services. You have to develop your own ontology and do the entity recognition yourself. So we have both tools so whenever we are looking for high frequency entity, we use the BPedia kind of things. And then when we want more specific uh, matching, we, we instrument our own entity recognition. Let me go back, but then there is the, the thing that I like most. So this is again, uh, okay, the top user, okay. And these are categories, right? So you have uh, entity recognition, and then what you do, you can look into the ontology and check wh what kind of types or categories these uh, entities are about. Eh? Not surprisingly, if you're talking about Expo, it's nations, right? And then you have uh, Milan, Republics, G20 nation, and so forth. Eh? If you go to the Como one, I don't think, no, it's not turned on in Como. Everybody knows what Expo is. Uh, oh, yes, of course. You, you know that there is the universal exposition in Milano. I, ju I was just giving it for granted. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a big event where all, from, from, from all over the world, people go in a city once in each seven years yeah. and they expose something. The team in Italy is food right now. Yeah. The food who feeds the earth. So basically you have like people from all over the world who speaks different language yeah. and about different topics because there are rep representation of each country so basically, I can be from uh, France, be in Italy and speaking about Japan. So this is a form of variety that is, yeah. is used to, yeah. to handle. Okay. Yeah. And there are all language detectors that then send uh, the, uh, the, the, the text to different annotators based on the language. Yes, I forgot that one. So we are using four or five different, different uh, entity recognition here in different languages. 
because I mean, when they are in Italian, we send them to uh, the company in Italy. When they are in English, we probably use Alchemy API. And when they are in other language, we have a Spanish one and a Far East one also. The language detection, we have our own algorithm, but it's an open source stuff that we modify. We tune it to, to, to Twitter. We basically use the language identifier of Twitter that basically gives you the localization of the phone, where it comes from. And if it's absent, we, we run it through this uh, uh, language detection API. Then I'm not sure what we do here. Oh, language detection API just gives you language or it gives you something more? Oh, it uses the, yes, it uses the tweet content, nothing else, yeah. But yes, of course, I mean, it's not that easy, I agree. It's, uh, it's a hard topic. But here we sell this, right? So we, we use the plain solution that works without... Uh, uh, so, so do you use, um, I mean, a question about entity recognition in Arabic, if you have done any? Arabic? Yeah. No. No? No, I, I'm, I know that uh, there is um, a company in Italy, it's called Expert System, they have uh, Arabic languages, yes, but I, I never check them out, no. Um, here we are using uh, a service by a Korean company that has uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese uh, and, um, and Korean. It's a company that we used to work with uh, since 2008. But yes, I mean, other languages from the, for instance, we don't use uh, Indi, Hindu. What's the, the name of uh, Hindi? We don't have that. We don't have uh, Vietnamese and uh, all those stuff, you know. And this is the last thing that I was willing to show, that we try to visualize the graphs of topics and the kind of people that are talking about what. So um, you can see. Uh, that uh, this is Expo, and this is Milano, and this is uh, so different topics. M maybe if I switch to entities, it's easy to read. So because here we're mixing entity and hashtags. So uh, they were talking about Russia, and this is the person that was doing it, and they, they, there is a uh, discussion about develops by these people, and then this is all discussion about Milan. Hmm? And uh, you, you can nicely see these things uh, uh, going on. For instance, when uh, Michelle Obama came to, to the pavilion, uh, UK pavilion, it was very nice because uh, there was uh, uh, her Twitter account, uh, some of the assistant Twitter account, and they were talking about health, uh, sustainable development, uh, and things like that. It was very, I have it on my laptop tomorrow if I, I remember, I will show it. Yeah. So this is done exactly in the way that uh, Professor Chef was uh, describing. So we take it, we model it uh, in, uh, in RDF using uh, um, the shock ontology, semantic commu online community ontology, yeah. something like that. And uh, then we use annotators to uh, do a, uh, to do link with DBpedia and uh, other knowledge graphs, and then we we do analytics on top of it, and we visualize stuff. Yeah, so that's uh, so it can be done at scale. Uh, today is is really possible to, to do it, and uh, you you also have these kind of things, right, for yeah. politics and uh, yeah. So and this is fully built on the technology that we will I will present you on uh, on Friday on oh, Thursday. Right, so it's a uh, work. Yeah? Chemical spoiler. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here telling about things that do not exist, right? But that's the point. They, they really exist, they are in production. Okay, done?